Yasso Mati Nandana Prajapa. Fifteen, okay. Yasso Mati Nandana Prajapa and Hagara Kokula Hanjada Kahan Yasso. Yasumati Nandana, Brajabadan Nagura, Kokula Hanjana, Kahan Nasa. Gopi Parandana, Madhama Nohara. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Kali Adamuna Vidhana. Kali Adamuna Vidhana. Amala Hadina, Mummy of the Lassa Amala Hadina, Mummy of the Lassa He paid a poor and daughter, Navina got a bottle, Ah, 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 Hey, Nanda, good and Rakku, ha 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 Sundar and go Jamuna Tatta Chata, who give us a no hara. Hasar Vindavana, not a bad, Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. 
भ्रमर महारे हे हरे राम हरे हा हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु 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 ध्याय प्रभु प्रभुपान की जय हरिनाम शंखीर धान की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो कंटिन्यू विथ द mood of balaram lila the balaram tatva so we're doing the chapter we'll try to do the whole chapter the killing of denuk the ass demon and this is text 23 okay soti viro suru rama hey krishna kara rupa drik Apmatulya balayar anyayar Chattibir bahubir vritaha Soti virya sura rama Hey Krishna kara rupa drik Apmatulya balayar anyayar Gyat ti bir bahu bir drita so ti bir yo sura rama hey krishna kara rupa drik hey krishna kara rupa drik atma tu balair anyair gyati bir bahu bir drita Vira, very powerful, Asura, a demon, Rama, O Rama, Hey Krishna, O Krishna, Kara Rupa, the form of an ass, Trik, assuming, Atmatuya, equal to himself, Balai, whose strength, Anyai. with others gyati bi companions bahu bi many vritaha surrounded okay so we'll start from verse 20 once some of the cowherd boys shridam the very close friend of ram and krishna along with subal and stoka krishna and others 
Lovely spoke the following words. The cowboy said, O Rama, Rama, mighty arm one, O Krishna, destroyer of the miscreants, not far from here is a very great forest filled with rows of palm trees. Hmm. So what I'll do is, the verse I chose doesn't have a purport, but this does, so I'm going to read the purport of verse 21. As stated in the Varaha Purana, not far from the western side of Mathura, a distance of two yojanas, 16 miles, is the holy place named Govardhan, which is most difficult to attain. It is also stated in the Varaha Purana, not far from the western side of Mathura, one yojana away, eight miles, is the forest known as Talavan, which is guarded by a Denukasura. Thus it appears that Talavan forest is located midway between Mathura and Govardhan Hill. The forest of Talavan is described in the Sri Harivamsa as, as follows. The land there is even smooth and very expansive. The earth is black, densely covered with durva grass, and devoid of stone and pebbles. Mm. In that Talavan forest, many fruits are falling from the trees, and many are already lying on the ground, but all the fruits are being guarded by the evil Danuk. The demon Danuk would not allow anyone to eat the delicious ripe fruits, palm fruits of the Talavan, and Krishna's young boyfriends protested this unjust usurpation of the right to enjoy the fruits of the public forest. So, Deno Gali, actually, Oma Gyan, Timirandasya, Gina Jana Salakaya, Chaksun, Militam Yena, Tasma, Shri Guru Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manobi, Stam, Stap, Ditam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa, Kedam Mayam, Dadati Swam, Padanti Kam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Tinami Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gaur Vani Pacharine Nivrasesa Sunyavari Pastyat Yade Satarine, Vanchakalpa Turubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pae Pacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo, Bhyo Nama Om Namaha, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. O Rama, O Krishna, Denuk is a most powerful demon and has assumed the form of an ass. He is surrounded by many friends who have assumed a similar shape and who are just as powerful as he. So how did that Danuk get to that Taliban forest? What was his program? Why would he guard all these fruit trees? Actually, they were. that was Kamsa's area. Kamsa had controlled that forest. And in order to protect what he, what he would do is they would take those fruits and then, then they would bring them to Kamsa and Kamsa would make this beverage out of it. I would squeeze it <laughs> and make this very delicious tasting beverage. So Kamsa wanted all of it for himself. That's Kamsa. <laughs> it's just like when you get a chance to eat Shasho's pizza, you don't want to share it with anybody. <laughs> it's just like that. Just, you, when you eat the pizza of Shasho, you, be, you, you start to feel like Kamsa. I, I should get it all, you know. <laughs> it tastes so good, you don't want to, you know, you just want to get as much as you can. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there's dangers in both aspects of life, of good and bad. <laughs> So, yeah, so it's, uh, Kamsa was really vigilant, and he put these demons, Danuk, in charge to make sure nobody would get those fruits, and Kamsa would come regularly with his men and take. So, but the cowherd boys, they, they realized that these are really special tasting fruit, and they wanted to taste it. And so now they're, they're petitioning Krishna. You know, this 
We want these fruits, they're so nice. <laughs> We're hungry. The demon, Danuk, has eaten men alive. Wow. And they are all people and animals are terrified to go in the Tala forest. O oh, killer and the enemy, even the birds are afraid to fly there. So Kamsa had some many powerful assistants, and here was one Danuk. So there's a little purport here. Well, we don't, we don't have time to read all the purports, but it says here in the very end, the cowherd boys wanted Krishna and Balaam to kill the demons so that all the pious inhabitants of Vrindavan could enjoy the fruits in the tallow forest. Thus they requested the special favor that the ass demon be killed. Mm. Boy, devotees are very kind to all living entities, and now cowherd boys want to have these demons killed. Why? What do you think about that one? Don't. Okay, so this is the situation. So now, Krishna, he wants to respond to the request of his friends. And they go on, please get those fruits for our minds. Our minds are attracted to that Roma. Thou Balaram, we want, you're great, you can do it. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, they're... They, they have such an intimate relationship with Krishna. It's not that they offer obeisances and then say, well, Krishna, if you feel like doing this, please get the fruit for us. But if you don't, it's okay. No, we want it. <laughs> and I know you can get it. We can't get it. You're special. <laughs> and you're very kind to everyone, so please. <laughs> so... They're petitioning Krishna in this way. And then Krishna and Balaram laughed. Because <laughs> that's what, the cowherd boys, that's what they do all the time. They just laugh and play. <laughs> and then uh, they set off for the Taliban forest with the cowherd boy friends. And they entered the forest. The two arms became, then with two arms, they start shaking the trees like mad and elephants and what happens all the fruits were starting to hit the ground that's a falling fruit <laughs> so he hit it in the ground and then the sounds of the falling fruit uh, demon said hey what's going on here is there an earthquake no our fruits are being stolen so Danuk, he comes along with his fellow asses. So the powerful demon rushed up to Balaman and sharply struck Lord in the chest with his hoods and his hind legs. Then Danuk began to run about braying loudly. It says here, moving again towards Lord Balaram, O king, the furious ass situated himself with his back towards the Lord. Then, screaming in rage, the demon hurled his two hind legs at him. He made a horrible, angry sound. Demons, they, they wax anger all the time. They're always angry, because what is anger? So who can give me a definition of anger? What is anger? What is uh, a good way to describe anger. Hmm? Unfulfilled desires, yeah, unfulfilled. The intensity of the unfulfilled desires causes one to become, that emotion arises, and one exhibits this a very unpleasant mood of anger. And what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita about anger? Never satisfying. Yeah, it's like a burning fire. So the more you feed it, the more it gets worse. That's the one that we're looking for. Yeah, contact with the mode of passion, the all-devouring sinful activity of the world. So and they, people become angry at each other. People become angry at different groups. People become angry at... Countries become angry at other countries. And anger, what, is, what does Krishna say in the... Second chapter about anger. What does it do to your mind? You begin, yeah, you become crazy. So, what does it do? What does it destroy? Intelligence, right? 
your intelligence is gone. And when your intelligence is gone, you can't reason. You can't see the situation correct, correctly, and nor can you make a proper decision. So anger causes things to become confused and diluted, and then one just responds to the mood of anger. And then one acts or doesn't act. Then usually, sometimes when devotees fall into that later on they're sorry because they realize they come back to their sensible consciousness and they say, oh, I got angry, I apologize, it was a mistake. I, you stole my pizza and I punched you. And so I'm sorry, I mean, we could have asked Shasha just to make more pizza, but I punched you instead. <laughs> so, so, you know, these, <laughs> So this anger is, you know, it doesn't have any sense to it. It's just completely nonsense. But it's, well, it's as Krishna says, it's never satisfied and it's all devouring. So Lord Balaram, he's, 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 eating, a, he's eating a fruit. And when Balaram eats, he doesn't like to get disturbed by some demon. So now Balaram decides to do something. So he sees Danuk by the hoofs, whirls him around, with one hand, I mean, he, the other hand, he's still eating the fruit because you can't interrupt Prashad, you know. It's not proper. So he's still eating the fruit and he's throwing the deep in around. Okay. <laughs> he hits the tree and he threw him on the top of a palm tree in the violent wheeling motion. I mean, he was dead before he hit the tree. <laughs> it wasn't a kirtan. He was kind of like spinning around. It was like, you ever happen that in kirtan when you're like spinning around, you get dizzy and you fall? <laughs> so Danuk was really spinning around, you know. He was, so he got, when he hit the tree, he was already, uh, that was his graveyard. <laughs> So then it says, Balaram then threw the dead body of Dainukasir into the tallest of the palm tree. The demon landed in the treetop, and the tree began shaking, the great palm tree causing it. A tree by its side also to shake, broke under the weight of the demon. The neighboring trees caused yet another tree to shake, and this way one, one truck one struck another tree which also became shaky. In this way, many trees in the forest shook and broke. Wow. Boy, we have to report Balaram to the Agricultural Society. He's destroying trees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lord Brahma threw the demon so vilely into the great palm tree that a chain was unreleased and then great crashing sounds. Because of Lord Balaran's pastime of throwing the body of the dast demon in the top of the tallest palm tree, all the trees became shaken and violent against one another, as if blown by a powerful whim. For Balaram, that's not such a wonderful thing. He's the unlimited personality of Godhead. Now, down then the, the asses get together and have a little ass conference. So. <laughs> So the Aliases, they decided, hey, you know, our, the big ass is killed, but we're our little asses and we, we remain faithful to that big ass. So we have to pursue, we have to avenge his death. So they all charged at Lord Balaram and Krishna. The demons attacked. Krishna and Balaram easily seized them one after another and with their hands, choom, choom, choom. Throwing them up to the trees this way, and then you know, because it, it's not like a big effort. It's just like just playing like a child playing with a little toy, you know. <laughs> but these demons are giving. They're, I mean, they're powerful. I mean, they're really strong. But for Krishna, it's like a little peanut. Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai. Krishna's strength is unlimited. That means there's no limit. And then it says here, this is interesting, the earth then appeared beautifully covered with heaps of fruits and with the dead bodies of the demons. Why did they use the word beautiful 
when there's dead demons all over in the form of an ass and then fruits are scattered everywhere. Why was it, why is the word beautiful mentioned? Who can figure that one out? Demons are all different colors. Yeah, that was a, that was a panace, panacea of different colors. But there's another element of the beauty that I was thinking of also. But that, that's the panoramic sight, Prabhupada says here. Yeah. Yeah, that's also <laughs> the fact that the Christian Balaram were involved with the mess. So, because whatever they do is always beautiful anyway. <laughs> so the demons became blessed like that. But then the panoramic sight is really also connected to this beautiful sight here. So killing these stubborn asses and like that, and Krishna and Balaram performed their wonderful pastimes. Gemi gods, what do they do? They rain flowers down from the sky. They beat on their different drums. And people now felt returning to the forest. Denuga was no longer there, and the cows grazed nicely, and the fruits were available to everyone. Kamsa finds out later, and then he sends more demons. But for Krishna, you know, killing demons is like, it's like regulated part of the day. <laughs> you know, it's something, well, let's see, sometimes it's a little late. What happened? Demon, you're a little late. I was supposed to kill you earlier. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess T. I intrigue stretch time. <laughs> Intriguing stretching time. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, hearing the mix, miss, magnificent feet of the two brothers, the, 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 the demigods jump into action here. So, this particular pastime has a very significant tattva that's connected with it were demons that were killed in Vrindavan. Most of them were killed by Krishna. But two, Palambasura and Dainuk, were killed by Balaram. Balaram represents the pure spiritual master, the original spiritual master. He is Adi Guru. And so there is an element of uh, what we say, principle. there's a principle that's attached to this. And what is that principle? that these demons represent a type of an artha. And Dainuk represents, uh, he is, represents the ass-like mentality of working hard for material results. <laughs> you see, people work hard for when they, I mean, even, I notice even on the weekends here, people are working. They, I mean, if, I know, you know, we have people who actually when they are no longer able to work, or when, in other words, they're retired, they get bored and they go back to work after a while. People like to work because that's the ass mentality. They can't think about sitting and contemplating God or chanting Hare Krishna or using their time in a more mental way. They have to use that hard work mentality. So that's the, hard, that's the mentality of an ass. An ass can work very hard. You put loads on its back, it'll carry on big heavy loads, and it gets very little, little in return. You know. I remember we had these two asses that were in New Vrindavan, that were just across the road from the temple, it was a big field. One was a female and one was a male. <laughs> And uh, so one devotee decided to get into some assology, the study of asses. And he noticed <laughs> that uh, when the male wanted to have, you know, some intimate relationship with his female ass, he would, you know, prance along in a very joyful mood. And he'd get close to him and then she'd kick him, boom, <laughs> right in the face solid, full force. Uh, ladies should learn that one. <laughs> it's a good, good trick, because these guys are just, you know, 
Guys are just, they don't know anything. <laughs> anyway, there's another saying which goes, uh, a man chases a lady until she catches him. <laughs> that's another thing, but we'll, that's another point. So, yeah, and so then he gets knocked back, but he's not discouraged. <clears throat> you know, he straightens out his teeth and comes back again. And then he, she gets again, she gets loaded up and she just gives him another whack, boom. And then he goes flying back again. But he's still, he's thinking, it's all worth it. <laughs> yeah, the harder she kicks, the greater the love. <laughs> Hard love. <laughs> it reminds me of something else, but I won't say it. <laughs> no, it's not so nice. <laughs> After Bhagavatam class. <laughs> well, it's not actually. It's, it's, it's actually by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. He states it. Is that in the heat of loving romance, sometimes people get so worked up that they start biting each other? Yeah, this is, and, and Prabh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Chakor uses that in describing how when Krishna was charging after Bhishma Dev, Bhishma Dev was shooting the arrows at Krishna, and Krishna was ex experiencing those arrows as a lover, as love bites coming from the lover. And that was Vishwanath Chakravarti Chakor's, uh, you know, uh, what we say. Analysis. Anyway, after a couple few kicks, then she gives up and he, he doesn't. <laughs> so then finally, uh, she. Uh, um, so this is ass like. <laughs> so ass doesn't really have much to offer us in terms. So though this particular point is very interesting, so think about this that that mentality that we have to work hard for Krishna consciousness. We can work hard for Krishna, but for Krishna consciousness, we don't have to work hard. Well, all we have to do is perform our service and chant the holy names of the Lord, like that. Jai Maharaj, Hare Krishna. And uh, so for the devotees, we don't we have to understand that in order to get rid of this anartha, the idea of working hard for material sense gratification, one has to work on that. Mm -hmm. Where the demons that Krishna killed and the anarthas they represent are connected directly with the process of bhakti. The ones that Balaram killed, you have to make an effort to get rid of these things. Palambasura, Dainakasura. These two, these anarthas that these demons represent, you have to see them within yourself and consciously try to remove them. Along with, of course, following the process of bhakti. Because without doing that, even your efforts to eliminate that will never be successful. So, therefore, yeah, we have to carefully understand that these anarthas, working hard for material gain, and, uh, and, uh, and of course, what was Dainuk doing? He was working for Kamsa. And so, just like we see in the material world, people work for people, that not only they don't even know, but they don't even like them sometimes. <laughs> oh no, my boss, he's just a ass. <laughs> I come one minute late and he starts grumbling at me. <laughs> so yeah, and then what do you get? You get a little pay, which is a piece of paper. <laughs> it has no value at all. <laughs> That's another subject. Paper money is simply another form of cheating, that's all it is. 
Because if the government fails, what do you have? You have you can just put it in your pillow, or you know use it for you know stuffing your mattress. <laughs> it's useless. Wealth is not paper money. That's just some what we say indication that you can get goods because the government says it's okay. <laughs> but as soon as the government says it's not okay. Take your money and just, you know, yeah, you'd burn it. They were burning money <clears throat> when I was there in India a couple of years ago when uh, Mr. Modi wanted to stop the black market of money. He, he, he changed some of the currency, and so some of the currency was no longer valid. So anybody who had that denomination, I think it was the... Uh, the 2,000 2000 rupee note, and uh, yeah, so they were just, was useless. They just were piling it up and burning it. No good anymore. So paper money is just, it's a form of cheating. There's a whole lecture by Srila Prabhupada how he describes this in detail. So people working, not only are working, they're just spending their blood, their sweat, their time, their energy, their whole life getting pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah. Real wealth is cows, land, and uh, precious metals. Hmm. Precious metals, any you know, many precious metals. These are the, this is the real wealth that God provides, and if you have these things, you're actually wealthy. <laughs> you have paper, and you're you know, you're a paper boy. That's all. <laughs> paper girl. <laughs> Useless. But for now, we use it to get things because the government says it's okay. <laughs> Okay, so Danuk, so make an effort to get rid of this mentality of struggling hard for material things. Material things are automatically provided by Krishna when you perform devotional service. You don't have to work for the non-devotees. Work for Krishna and Krishna will take care of all your needs. When he's pleased, sometimes in the beginning it doesn't seem like that. But when if you please Krishna, Krishna provides everything you need. He provides for the non-devotees, how much will he provide for his devotees? So therefore, it's no good to, it's not, it's not really, waste, we're wasting time simply working for, you know, hard for material gain like that. Okay, so any questions? We have about 11 minutes. Comments? One question. Somebody ask a question. Roberto. <laughs> no? Okay. Mataji, you, you're good at questions. No questions? So do I, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Mine's bigger than yours. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Last time you were talking about uh, connection between uh, um, let's say attraction to the opposite sex and lack of determination. Can you explain this a little more? And lack of lack of determination. Yes, for a devotional service. Well, the more you're attracted to sense gratification, the more your determination is weak. When you give up sense gratification, you have greater determination, and the height of material sense gratification is sex life. So those who can remain completely free from sex life, 
they can become, become very determined in their Krishna consciousness. Yeah, it's actually directly connected. It's not just some, you know, you, make, you don't make that connection. The connection is there. Give up sex life, it's, then Krishna consciousness is, is pretty much easy. <laughs> like that. I mean, if you're a grihasta and you're having children, that sex life is sang is holy. That's fine. But that that is that's spiritual. That's not material. But even if you are not engaging in sex life, if you still have the desire for sex life, and you are, you know, ar agitated or irritated by the opposite sex that also will cause you to lose your determination in Krishna consciousness. You have to give up the desire also. Hmm. Yeah. But is it to give up or to transform? The, is it to give up or well, to the, transform? The, the transformation is, is, is called karm bharatasma, kamosmi bharatasabha. That's the Krishna says that a sex life that is not contrary for religious principles. But material sex life and sex life for children in Krishna consciousness has a completely different effect. Completely different effect. When you have material sex life, you lose your intelligence, you lose your physical energy. All these things become less every time you engage in sex life. Whereas spiritual sex life is not like that. There's no, no loss. So it's a completely different. So it's not that, well, I like sex life, therefore I'll, I'll get married and have about 10, 10 wives and they all have to get pregnant. That's not the idea either. <laughs> the idea is that it's an austerity to bring children into the world, and therefore one should see it in that way. But it's required because married life without children is like a desert. <laughs> but that's not for devotees. Devotees can somehow have, be married and not have children, but that, that's a rare, Grihasta couple, that they can stay fully engaged nicely in Krishna consciousness and feel happy. But generally a woman, a woman wants a child. Her body is made for that and she has that nature to, to bring children and to take care of children. That's her nature. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I didn't clarify. I, I thought about the desire, because then the desire is the problem. Like desire, like as I understand, like when uh, it's lust, right? But lust in other form is like love, love to Krishna. Like, well, so then but then it has to be it has to be regulated. It's not like I love Krishna so much that I'm going to have sex every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> That's yeah. not the idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not thinking about sex particularly, just like generally, like how to get this uh, strong wish. So then you determine. You're well, just give it up. <laughs> it's, it's easy. Give it up. It takes a little effort to give it up. We use the analogy, it's like when you have an itch, you get a mosquito bite and it really itches. If you scratch it, it gets worse. And the more you scratch it, the worse it gets. If you don't, but if you just say, all oh, it itches and it's painful, you let it go. And then you just tolerate it. The pain is there, the itch is there, it's, it's uncomfortable, but after a while, by practicing devotional service, then that itch goes away and you give it up. So by the power of your chanting Hare Krishna, and you're purifying your heart, then you don't really see any benefit in it anymore. It just becomes like, uh, 
It's just a waste of time, a waste of energy. It's not necessary. It doesn't make... Sex is not love. <laughs> get, get rid of that idea. Love is something completely different. Love means to do something for someone to make them happy. That's an indication of love. And when you give people Krishna consciousness, that means you're showing love to that soul. And when you try to please Krishna, that's love. That's, that's love. But sex life is, is selfish pleasure, that's all. In the material sense, in the spiritual sense, uh, bringing a child and raising the child in devotional service is a service to Krishna. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he was a nice sticky brahmachari. You know what nice sticky brahmachari is? Whole life. Whole life, but not even one drop of semen ever lost. Whole life. Mm -hmm. That means your brain is so sharp <laughs> and so intelligent. That's nice sticky brahmachari. That was Bhakti Siddhanta. But he said, and Prabhupada repeats it, you know, if I, if I was, <coughs> if I could have a hundred children, I would, and raise them all in Krishna consciousness. He, isn't, he wasn't against the, the ashram of Grihastha, but he was saying that, you know, Kamo, Kamo Spi Bharatasava, Krishna says, that sex life, which is meant to bring in a child to bring them to Krishna conscious. That's the purpose. That's all. The pleasure is nothing. The kirtan's more fun than that. Eating your pizza is better than sex life. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> and it lasts longer too. <laughs> Can have many pieces of pizza. So people think sex life is such pleasure. But Prabhupada, you want to really get into it, we can get into it. Prabhupada said, you know, it's the most abominable part of the body. Where does all the stool and urine come from? <laughs> Same place. <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice place. <laughs> but everybody thinks, oh, so nice. You smell so nice, I can't wait to get out of your association. <laughs> this body is simply a mess. <laughs> so, so, but the soul is beautiful, and the soul is what makes the body attractive. When there's no soul there, the body is, you know, you can have the most beautiful girl, beautiful boy, but when there's no soul there, nobody wants it. <laughs> it's just a piece of lump of, you know, garbage. <laughs> so, yeah, so there is, so, I know what you're, what you're getting at. You're looking for some... <laughs> but that you understand. Yeah, you can have children, I mean, but not too many children. It's not like, well, I want to have like, you know, three ashrams worth of kids. <laughs> then you have, then you have to support them all. <laughs> now that's a problem. And for ladies to give birth, you don't know. I don't know either. But the pain of birth, childbirth is so severe that it's the one of the biggest killers of women in the United States. Many women die at childbirth. It's so, it's such a, it's such a painful thing. And sometimes the pain is so strong that even those, even though the ones that give birth, they lose consciousness because of the pain. You think giving birth to a child is, is pleasant? Psh. Prabhupada was telling us, one, no, one devotee was telling Prabhupada, I used to work on an ambulance before I became a devotee and we would get calls from pregnant ladies and we would have to go and take them to the hospital when they're just about ready to give the child. 
and they would be yelling, never again, never again. Pain is real. Men can, you guys would never be able to experience that pain. But because the women have that love for that child, it, they can tolerate, they somehow go through it. Childbirth pain is, is probably one of the strongest pains that people un experience. And I've heard from ladies, they've, tell, they've, they've spoken about it, and what it's like. It's just... So... But still, because there's love there and there's the desire to have children, that's fine. That's fine. But not too many. Two children is nice. Three, you have to really struggle. You have two children is nice. You can't have one child. It's not right because they say if you have one child, then usually two is nice. One child sometimes grows up kind of dysfunctional or he becomes spoiled. <laughs> he gets all the care and all the love and all the everything and then he becomes he or she becomes spoiled it's nice to have two children like that two is good three i mean three is all right but after that i mean i have a god sister who had 10 children like and she and she huh sorry my father gave birth to 20 20 yeah. Was he Muslim, Islamic? <laughs> yeah, the, the Islamic people, you know, I have one disciple who's coming from the, a former Islamic family. He's one of 15 children. Mm -hmm. Bo. So, yeah, it's actually a very sacred part of Grihastha life to have children. But then again, one has to follow the principles and know what you're doing. It's not something, it's not an about enjoying sex life. <laughs> it's about bringing a soul who is ready to come into a spiritual family so they can continue making their journey back to Godhead like that. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so is you had another question? Yeah. So one one this mentality is so one is the S like mentality mm -hmm. that uh, the spiritual master so so which is the other one? He he gives you the intelligence and the mercy so you can overcome it. But you got to do it. <laughs> Wherein the other demons that Krishna killed and the Anarthas they represent, just by the power of your devotional service, you can overcome those Anarthas. But these two you have to work on <laughs> Palambasura and Dainuk. <laughs> Directly. Okay, you had a question? Okay, you, okay so. We'll, Stop here. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Lord Balaram Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.